In this floor plan seminar, we're going to take a look at the process of drawing a multi-story plan for a sloped lot. As you take a look at this design here, the upper floor, floor 3, is actually the main floor for road and sidewalk access, while the back of the house and the bottom floor, floor 1, shows up towards the bottom of the slope. Let's begin the process with a brand new plan. When you start a new plan, it's a good practice to understand what your floor defaults are. For my current floor, I've got a very thick floor structure consisting of a 1 and an 8 subfloor by a 22 inch truss. You can always change these later, but it's nice if you can set them in advance if you know this for the beginning of the project. With this multi-story house, floor 3 is actually going to have road access. Floor 2 will be the middle floor and floor 1 will be the bottom floor and then eventually I'm going to build a separate foundation in another video which would be floor 0. There's a few different ways you can do this but the practice that I'm going to show you is I'm actually going to build all three floors at the very beginning and then I'm going to create my main floor plan on floor 3. Let's go through the steps. Now the first step is to build three distinct floors. Under the build menu let's go down to the floor and we'll build a brand new floor. It's important that we go ahead and set the structure to be the same for each of these floors. Let's go ahead and change the ceiling so they're all at 109 and an eighth. My floor structure is the same. That will be the second floor. Again, one more floor. Let's go ahead and build the floor. Again, I want to make sure that the rough ceiling height is the same for all of these at 109 and an eighth and then the floor structure on this main floor 23 and an eighth. Now briefly, since the bottom floor is actually going to be built on a slab, I'm going to go down to floor one and I'm going to modify the defaults for that floor structure. So I'm going to come down to the floors and rooms and I'm going to go in and I'm going to first of all I'm going to remove the floor finish. This is going to be built on a slab and then for the floor structure I'm actually going to start with a four inch concrete slab. Let's go ahead and change the material to concrete. I'll just use my search for that material and below the concrete I want to have two inches of rigid foam. We'll go ahead and browse for that material. Many times I just like to use the search key if I know what that material is. Now floors three and two both have the same floor structure. Floor one has a floor structure of six inches. Now I'm ready to begin on floor three. Now the process is to select the wall tool and I'm going to go ahead and draw the walls out and I'm just going to fast forward through this and go ahead and place my uh, walls and my windows for the floor plan. Now I quickly added the walls and the doors and the windows for the floor plan. You can see in 3D what we have. Now the next thing I want to do is I want to build the middle story, floor 2, and it's actually going to stack along this wall on the garage and then go down. So there will be no walls for the most part ahead of the garage since that's all going to be filled with terrain and actually the garage will be floated. The normal drawing process is usually to draw your main floor on floor 1 but I've actually started with floor 3 and when I use the build new floor in the typical process it will drive that floor from the previous floor. Since I've started in a reverse order drawing from floor 3 down I'm actually going to select my walls that I want and I'm going to copy and paste and hold position on floor 2. Let's take a look at the steps. I'll show you a couple of the shortcuts that I use in this process. I'm going to use my exterior wall tool and notice my cursor changes to a plus sign. I'm actually going to hold my shift key down, then I'm going to hold my left mouse button down and I'm going to draw a marquee around all of the walls that I'm interested in and release and I'm actually going to hold my shift key down and I'm going to grab that last wall. While they're selected, let's use the copy tool down here in the lower left hand section of my menu. Press copy, go down to the second floor and now I'm going to use the edit, paste, hold position which will then exactly align those walls. The next process is a little bit of cleanup. To begin I want to remove all of the interior walls since I want to create a brand new footprint in here. I want to make sure that in my preferences I toggle my selection process off. You'll find this underneath your edit behavior. Marquee selection down here in the bottom, intersected or contained in. A lot of times I'll use these and toggle these on and off. I've also added this as a custom toolbar button right down in this area right over here and I can quickly toggle that between the two different selection modes. Let's change it to be intersected in objects and I'm going to hold my shift key down and anything that my cursor touches will actually delete all of those walls. Go ahead and press the delete key and for the most part I deleted all of the walls that I wanted. 
Again, I use this in my custom toolbars to change it to be intersected or contained, whichever one helps you do the selection process. The next step is to do a little bit of cleanup on the walls. Let's use the reference display tool you'll find over here in your menu. There's also a shortcut F9 on your keyboard. You can set this up to display certain things. In this case, in the default, it's going to show the floor above with the different walls. In this section over here, I'm going to select this wall. I'm going to pull it back so it snaps into place. This area above this will actually be cantilevered in that section. I'm going to put a break right in here and we'll pull this wall back over and have it align in this area. While the wall is selected, you'll find the break tool up here in the menu. I'll come over, create a notch in this area, and we'll slide this over on purpose just slightly off center of the wall below. And I'll point out a tool that I also use or make sure that it's active is align with wall above. You'll use that sometimes to make sure that it stacks exactly. Notice it disappeared from my edit menu in the bottom once it is aligned. I'm going to go ahead and pull this wall down slightly and then I'll use this diamond over here and pull it back around so that it stacks and snaps into place. Do the same thing over here. Let's go ahead and use that diamond. Pull it around. Notice that the align with above and below is not showing so I don't have to worry about that and I'll go ahead and remove this extra wall in here F9 on the keyboard and now you can see that the floor plan on the second floor is ready to be further edited with the interior walls and then adjusting the doors and windows that I pulled down from the first floor Another trick that I often use when I've copied walls and I don't want the openings in there, go ahead and select the door tool in this case. Again, hold your shift key down, drag it around the entire area that will select all the doors. Same process for the windows. Hold the shift key down, drag it around, and then you can easily delete and isolate those particular objects. Press F9 on my keyboard so I can see the floor above. And I want to actually cantilever this section in here. And on the deck that's out in this area, we're going to go ahead and snap that in into place so it's a little bit smaller deck and then this wraparound wall we do not actually need that. Now for the most part I have the exterior walls in place press F9 on the keyboard to remove that reference display go ahead and delete these couple of walls by holding my shift key down and I need to change some of the wall types in this area these are going to be embedded into the terrain and they'll need to be changed to concrete. To make a change to these three walls, I'm going to hold my shift key down and then we'll double click and open up and explore the wall type. I'm going to go ahead and change the wall type. Now typically this might be an 8 inch stem wall with a furred interior wall on the inside of it. You can see that type of wall type in my wall selection. Let's go ahead and take a look. It's got a combination of an 8 inch concrete wall, 2 inch air gap, a 2 by 4, and then our sheetrock. And in many cases, this is the type of wall that you're going to want to select. In my case, I actually have a very large foundation. And for this floor, there actually wouldn't be concrete. And I've created a wall that will align by using a fake 8-inch concrete. Let me show you what that looks like. What I've done here is I've created a wall that's a 4-inch, and it's very similar. But I've called it a pseudo wall for the purpose of stacking it. Let's take a look at the properties of this wall. Notice that I have 8 inches for the concrete, but I've assigned it a material of air gap because I actually don't want to see that concrete on this particular floor. I've got an air gap of 1 inch in this case, and then I have a stud and then my half inch of sheetrock. Let's go ahead and select this and we'll explore it a little bit more. In the 3D view, you can see the back side of the walls. There's actually no concrete and the inside of the walls don't look any different. They're going to be a furred wall. I'll make the same change on this fourth wall over here that I omitted. And if I open up the completed plan and show you the foundation, this might make a little bit of sense why I'm doing this. And I'm actually only using it to help me in alignment of the walls above and below. Now I've opened up the completed foundation and you can see the actual foundation has a very large stem wall in that back area that we were just looking at for the middle floor. All of these walls are being generated from the foundation floor plan that will be created on floor zero that I will show you in a subsequent video. And on the other floor that we're working on, I actually don't want any concrete walls on here because they again will be generated from the foundation. So I've used a pseudo wall to help me in the alignment when I eventually want to align all of those walls up. Now let's go ahead and build the first floor. Again, I'm going to select the walls off of the second floor. And I'm going to copy and paste and hold position on the very first floor. 
from the floor plan view, I'm going to go ahead and hold my shift key down and I'm going to grab all of the different walls that I want. Control C on the keyboard, move down to the bottom floor, floor one, edit, paste, hold position. You'll find a shortcut here in Control Alt V and it will paste those walls so they exactly stack. And then we'll do a little bit of cleanup. And I'm just going to select on this wall segment and remove it. And we'll go ahead and pull this wall since it has the right properties back using that same concrete wall type that we had in this area. And on the 3D view for that floor, again, you can see the back side of those walls have nothing other than a blank space, an air gap, and here is the floor plan of it. The other thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and actually pull part of this wall back around the side since the terrain will actually be coming down and sloping through this area and the outside of that portion of the wall will need to be concrete. I'll do that from the floor plan view. We'll just come in here and I'm just going to pull this back. I happen to know that it's exactly five feet. Press the tab key. I'll go ahead and enter in 60 inches. Make sure that the angle in this case should be 90 and that will exactly move that wall up. I'm going to do the same thing actually on the second floor. Those walls will then match. Let's go ahead and move up to the second floor. You can see how it stacks and then up to the third floor and you can see how it stacks. Again, it does look a little strange without the concrete wall on the back of this, but it's more accurate the way the construction will actually be created for the design. You still see a cavity for the framing in here for the deck. And I'm going to go ahead and add the doors and windows and actually the interior walls for floor two and floor one and skip ahead for that portion of the video. I've gone ahead and added the doors and windows for the levels of two and one. As you step down the design, you can kind of see the different ways that I put those walls in there. Again, using the wall tool, changing the wall types. If we step down one more level, you can see the, the different walls that I've laid out for, for the most part, an unfinished basement. Let's take a look at adding the dimensions. Notice that my layer set right now says it's the working layer set. I also have a save plan view that can recall the different layer sets, defaults, which includes our annotations. The working set is typically where you might start your drawing process. I like to add my floor plan dimensions on a layer set called floor plan. Let's go ahead and switch that layer set to floor plan. Notice that it turned off my deck information when I did that. Those walls are on a different layer and I want to turn those off. Now that I have this on the floor plan layer set, let's go ahead and add our automatic dimensions. Go ahead and choose this tool for the auto exterior dimensions. The automatic exterior dimensions does a pretty good job of placing your dimensions. You can always click on these dimensions and modify them. Now beware if you do modify them and you refresh your automatic exterior dimensions, it will duplicate them because as soon as you do an edit to them, they become a manually edited dimension. If you want to control the way your exterior dimensions work, you can find the settings underneath your default tools. Underneath your auto exterior dimension defaults, there are tools that you control for the reach information and how you want to locate your objects. Notice that I have my dimension layer selected. If you were just doing surfaces, maybe for interior related projects, and then my openings are being controlled in here. I'm just using the center, but if you want to change that, you can go in here and make any changes. Also notice there is a auto refresh. I typically don't like to have that on because once I place my auto exterior dimensions and I'm near the end of the modifications to the walls and windows, I actually like to control it myself, so I usually don't use this auto refresh setting. A concept that we implemented beginning in version Chief Architect X10 is the concept of saved plan views. Much like you can have multiple 3D views open, you can also have multiple views of your plan open at the same time. And there may be good instances. I may want this floor plan open on the second floor simultaneously while open on the third floor and doing different editing. These save plan views will also save your active defaults and your annotation sets. Let's go ahead and save this plan view and create a plan view just for the floor plan dimensions. Underneath the tools menu, you'll find plan views and I'm going to actually save this plan view and I'm going to call it the floor plan view. I also like to create a layer set and now also a save plan view for brochures that don't have the dimensions on there. I create a layer set for that and I actually call it in my case the floor plan shell. That quickly turns that dimension layer off and then I'll also go ahead and save a saved plan view for this and I'm just going to call it the floor plan shell. Now you can access these 
saved plan views, one through your drop down, or two through your project browser. Notice for this particular plan, I have the current open floor plan shell. I could also open that view for the dimensions. We could go down to the second floor. I'll go ahead and add the automatic exterior dimensions for this floor. And you might notice I actually have two tabs open for this particular plan. One is using the third floor and two is now using that second floor. These saved plan views you can also open them up and you can save particular information. You can save the plan view on a particular floor. You can save the zoom factor if you're zoomed into a particular area. And then it can also save it with your annotation sets, which are nothing more than a collection of these defaults down here in this area for controlling things like your text, your dimensions, and your callouts. One last thing to cover in the video before we close is walls can control your ceiling height and if you look at these couple options I put together for the kitchen along the back wall notice that there is a ceiling plane back in here it's actually a nine foot ceiling plane and as you come out into the room the ceiling is open above and I've controlled that through different wall properties in drawing a wall, an invisible wall that would go along the back of this area right in here. That invisible wall gives me room definition and in this room I can actually mark that it has a ceiling and then in the larger room I can mark that there is no ceiling. Let's just explore that real briefly. Back in the plan view, that area that I'm talking about is right in this section. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use a room divider tool you'll find in here that automatically has properties that are invisible. I'm just going to come down and draw an area right in here, turn that layer on. And when you click in this area, notice that it now has a gray highlight that's given you room definition. And when you're outside of the room, in this case, let's click on the other side, I can actually now come in here and remove the ceiling out, which I've already done and we'll just make sure that that setting is also in here we'll just go ahead and put it back in that will create a flat ceiling notice that the room divider actually changed to be a thickness that matches that it generates the platform and one final thing in this area right here for the pantry there's a concept of a shelf ceiling that you can mark that is actually a room that has a ceiling inside of a larger room and then you can set the ceiling height in this area. And when you take a 3D view, you can see what this looks like. Now you'll notice in the 3D view that this ceiling comes down because of the invisible wall. The invisible room divider actually becomes a six inch wall because it generates this change in ceiling. And then the wall off to the side over here along this side kitchen wall is actually set up as a railing wall and you can control the height of it. This room back in the corner is the pantry and we change that to the shelf ceiling which is a room in a room if you kind of tilt the view up a little bit you can see that there's actually a ceiling that comes in and it's called a shelf ceiling well this concludes the seminar on the lake point floor plan when you're creating a multi-story plan where the road or entryway is on the upper level you could consider the process that I used by creating three blank floors, drawing your main floor plan on the third floor, and then using the copy paste hold position of your walls to bring those down so they stack and align exactly. The cantilever deck and the floated garage, I didn't cover too much in this video because it will be covered more in the framing. Just using the railing tool, you can see how that float occurs. Again, by not having a floor in the garage, it's not supplied by the foundation. We added dimensions. We created a couple of layer sets, one without the dimensions turned on. I call it the floor plan shell. And then saved plan views, much like saved camera views, allow you to have multiple views of the plan open at the same time.